Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this one is going to be very special because Dragoonity Glow is here, as is Remus, as is Legatus. I know these cards have been out for a little over a week at this point. It goes to the past released Thursday, like two weeks ago at this point, so almost two weeks ago, but I've been very busy. I unfortunately did not have enough time to get these cards, test with them to like the capability of like wanting to put out a deck list in this format with the current format, like how the format is structured and all that sort of stuff. But finally, I am no longer as busy as I was previously and I have time to make videos and do stuff uh, catering around the purpose of making those videos. So, hope you enjoy. <laughs> We've been waiting months for these. You guys have been waiting months for this deck profile. Y'all have been saying deck list, 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 deck list for months. Ever since last July, I've had constant bombardments of people being like, hey, when's a deck list for the new cards, new support? Huh? When are you going to give us that? And I always said I was going to wait until the new support came out. I was never going to make a deck list with the proxies of the cards in a fake format. But now we have the cards, so now you get a deck list. Dragoonity Glow is here. The entire way this deck gets to play has changed, and I cannot wait to show you what my current deck list for the post goes from the past new Dragoonity support deck list looks like. But before I show you the deck list, if you're new here and want to see more Dragoonity content, definitely check out the rest of the channel. I've covered in depth a lot of different combos with this new support since last July when these cards were announced. And if you want to see more Dragoonity content coming up in the near future, then definitely make sure to subscribe and enable that little notification bell if you don't want to miss an upload. Also, if you want to see videos like I did previously for Drytron of like three basic Dragoonity combos that you should know or doing test hands with Dragoonities as a video. If you want to see either of those two things, make sure to like this video. If it gets 500 to 1,000 likes, I will definitely be sure to make those videos, 100%. I will guarantee those videos come out if this video gets over 500 likes for one of the videos and over 1,000 for both, for both different options. But with that out of the way, let me show you this deck list because I have been waiting literally since last July to make a deck list with these cards. So. Without further ado, let's jump straight in. Three copies of Sinidus and one copy of Ducks. These are your key normal summon starters. I don't like Sinidus that much as a starter, but you have to play it for consistency reasons. It's a concession. It's not being played because it's like super good. It is good, but it just it enables some very weird mindsets and rule sets of like what you have to go into combo structuring like with. And I just don't like it because it locks you to dragons so early and it uses an additional card out of your hand to do the exact same thing that Ducks does without locking you to dragons, which is you know, starting your combos. But Ducks is only like a card you get to utilize in hands with the Ravine. And while we do have eight copies of Ravine now in this deck list, through the Remuses, the Gold Sarks, the Terraforming, and the Ravines themselves, you need more consistency enabling starters that can play by themselves and Sinidus is one of those. So unfortunately, it has to still be played. But for Wing Beast Extenders, one copy of Zephyros because it's accessed in every combo through Gaederg, two copies of Legatus, and two copies of Miss Valley Baby Rock. Legatus is same deal with Ducks. Uh, it's like not really that great of an extender. It's accessed during every single hand where you have Ravine if you need the card. So you just get to it through that. Uh, it's something you don't want clogging hands with. Um, and Miss Valley Baby Rock is a card that is sort of incentivized to draw, but also not. It's fine to draw because you can discard it off of Gaederg by adding a different card and keeping that card. Uh, but you do get to access it straight out of your deck anyway. You just have to play at least two because you need to be able to make your cards like Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon and Dragoonity Glow better extenders because you're going to be using Gaederg's effect so many times in a turn. And being able to access a card that puts itself on the board immediately to be an extender is pretty, pretty huge. But carrying on, three copies of the best boy himself, Dragoonity Remus. This card is so much more important than Dragoonity Glow because Dragoonity Glow is great. It changes everything about the way the deck plays. It makes combos into a tum far more attainable in a far more streamlined fashion. But if Remus and by extension Legatus did not exist, the deck would still be less consistent because it wouldn't have as many accesses as a Ravine and it would have the same problem it's had for the entirety of its existence of if the normal summon got interacted with, then your deck was garbage. You literally couldn't play. Remus, and by extension Legatus, allow you to play without the normal summon. Even another card that got released in the support wave that I'm currently not playing, Dragoonity Whirlwind, is another card that can allow you to play without the normal summon into boards or into disruption. And so all of these cards solve the Dragoonity problem of having to have your normal summon stick or else you lose. So this card is by far so much more important than Glow in terms of like a new card for the deck because it boosts consistency and it makes the deck's weakness of losing to the normal summon being interacted with go away. If we did not have Glow but got this, the deck is still so much better. But 
Carrying on with tuners, three copies of Dragoonity Phalanx, because it's the best tuner, because it lets you make your actual big synchros, like Crystal Wing and Borland Savage, and two copies of Dragoonity Coos, because it's, again, an extender going into Lynx, but then also allows you to make Barka, uh, so it's, like, very good in that regard, because Barka being Soul Charge for all your little tuners is very nice. But for the big dragons that we play, one copy of Dragoonity Arma Mistleton, one Dragoonity Arma Leviton, one Tempest Dragon Ruler Storms, and then one copy of Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. I have not been too kind to this card post its errata, but it is played in this version. Although you could cut it because most of your combos do involve Leviton, the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon is used in certain specific combos that involve you needing to use Gaydurg's effect one more time. So you step into Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon for Gaydurg back instead of Leviton. These are usually combos that involve only opening Remus as your combo piece and nothing really else that's like super synergistic with a Dragoonity combo being formed. Like you open Remus plus a bunch of cards that don't really gel well together in terms of like making combos happen like Dark Rulers, Call by the Graves, and like Pendulum Scales like uh, Gate Zero or like Lechery. Like cards that aren't combo cards, you can still do a full combo with that hand because of Darkness Metal existing. So that's why it is played. And also it's just like, it's good. Like if you do draw Leviton, I mean, being able to summon Darkness Metal off the ton is pretty cool, I guess. Uh, there's varying situations that like uh, come up. The card you should definitely be playing three of in any Dragoonity deck list, regardless if you're playing Dark Worm or not. Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon. This card is a insane card because this card just revives Gaydurg, allow you to get extra Gaydurg effects. It allows you to use that Gaydurg with like a Miss Valley Baby Rock to make a Crystal Wing very early in your combo so you don't go too deep. You can negate Nibiru with that Crystal Wing or negate a Hand Trap with that Crystal Wing and then you can keep playing by using this to bring back the Gaydurg and then continuing play. Uh, instant three of. In any Dragoonity deck list you're ever playing that summons Gaydurg, instant three of. And it's also just better because you can play one copy of Dark Worm and by extension Gate Zero because this is a card that you can utilize to be free Ravine discard fodder, function as an extender, even if you aren't playing the Gate Zero, it's still good to play the one copy of Dark Worm, although you could just get away with not playing this package. I personally prefer to. But then you also get the Gate Zero, which can be scaled to make a Pendulum Summon to get this as an extender again, or just another free discard for Ravine Fodder. Uh, like, fantastic cards. So they sequence this deck very well into maintaining hand size uh, of, like, keeping the cards in your hand up so you can hold on to other extenders and play through hand traps more efficiently. But, last two monsters in the main deck, one copy of Morphage Goliath and one copy of Morphage Lechery. These are the 27th and 28th monster, and these are win conditions in their own right. Uh, I was playing Dragon Buster before, and you can do the Dragon Buster variant of this deck. It takes one less card in your main deck to play Dragon Buster. You equip it onto Leviton, lock your opponent out of the extra deck, and you know, yada yada yada. The combos also usually take, on average, one less card to perform. But, unfortunately, the way this format is shaping up is very, very conducive to playing this card in particular because people are playing less hand traps on average right now and they're playing more board breaking spells like dark ruler no more super poly forbidden droplets like all of these cards that would just absolutely savage you if you do not have lechery and scale and then you're also just making your opponent's deck worse by negating a lot of their you know powerful engine cards like nadir servant Invocation, Magical Meltdown, Shadal Fusion, all this sort of stuff. So these cards are just so good, like, compared to playing the Dragon Buster version. Like, they lean into this format so well. Uh, these are just, you're so incentivized to play these cards in this format because of the way that the format is shaping up with the boards are being broken against Dragon Link and other combo decks with super power, like powerful spell cards. So being able to naturally access this card makes this deck just very well positioned in the format. I definitely would consider, like, I would recommend, not consider, recommend you play this card over the Dragon Buster variant. In a future format, the Dragon Buster variant might be better, but for right now, Amorphages are the way to go. But that was 28 monsters. There's 15 spells rounding out the 43 card main deck. Three copies of Dragon Ravine, one copy of Terraforming, and one copy of Gold Sark. This card is Terraforming now because you can banish Tempest, add Remus, discard Remus for Ravine, and it's never been that in history before. Uh, Thunder Dragon's kind of an unplayable deck right now in terms of competitive success. I kind of wish Konami would start bumping Gold Sark back up to multiples like they've done in the past when the decks that abuse it uh, are finally no longer relevant. Um, because then that would make this deck more consistent and we get to Remus more consistently, which is better than opening Ravine by itself. Uh, but I digress. Like, the deck is just more consistent now than it's been in the last few months. The only time in history that we've had more Ravines now than we have now is when we had three Terraforming and three Set Rotation, and then Ravine had gone back to three at, like, the end of 2017. That's the only time in history where we've had more Ravines, because then we had nine. Now we have eight. Uh, eight is still a good number, but anyway... 
the Peace de Resistance, Dragoody Glow. This card is fantastic. I wish I was playing three of it, but right now I'm playing Monster Reborn instead of the third. And unfortunately, it's not really what constitutes a three of in terms of the way the card reads. Uh, it's very good, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's just like it's only an extender, and it's not even that good of an extender compared to other cards like Monster Reborn and like Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon and stuff, which is why those cards take higher priority in the, in the deck list. Um, but this card's great because this card is additional copies of Mistleton, but giving that Mistleton an additional effect to special summon what you equip to it, being the Gaydurg. Um, this card's fantastic. Completely changes the way that combos are structured on Dragoonity combos. If you need more information about this card and you have not you know, seen how this card structures combos differently, I highly recommend you go check out a video I made last July when these, the card was announced and it's titled Dragoonity Glow Changes Everything. I highly recommend you go check that out because that'll give you at least the starting point of understanding why this card is so damn good. But... Last Dragoonie spell and trap that I play is one copy of Divine Lance. Uh, you want to play this in case you open Glow, give you a different search target off Romulus that is an extender, get more tuners into circulation for Barka, and also, like, it making your guy immune to traps is also very good against control matchups because you can just summon a big guy like Ascalon or a Reaver, and you can just make it immune to traps with this and, like, just destroy them through that because you have a big dude that's outing monsters every turn via negating effects or banishing them based on which one you summon and is immune to traps so they can't do anything with the rest of their deck. For Consistency Enablers, uh, two cards of Constance. I really like this card. I didn't like this card originally in testing because I thought I was never going to discard Remus for cards of Constance, but then I started opening hands where I'm opening Remus plus Dragon Ravine, and I don't want to take an unnecessary minus one playing two Ravines in the same turn over one another. So, cards of Constance, the Remus away? Yeah, I'll do that. You have eight targets, nine with the Gold Sark, so you get to use this card a lot, and it digs you for more combo pieces. Putting Kooses and Flanks in Graveyard fuels your Barca further draws you into more uh, extenders, like you have more chances to see Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, Monster Reborn, any of these extenders that like to play through more interactions, and it's just really good. I highly recommend you give this card a try. Uh, these cards were originally Pot of Prosperities when I was testing the deck, but digging the th those like three cards in and seeing the third extra card over what this card lets you see uh, was never really relevant. It was only relevant in a very, very small sample size of games. Most of the time, I will gladly just cards a consonants either before a combo or mid combo to see more cards because it also makes your combo more efficient because instead of having to continuously discard cards off Ravine to like, or Gaydrug to get those like, uh, tuners in the grave, you can just cycle them out for two new cards and then like you can start playing with those cards. Uh, so it's really good in that regard, but powerful one of spells, Call by the uh, Grave and Monster Reborn. This card's just worse Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon because it's got less effect, but it's still good for allowing you to make Crystal Wing very early. Uh, it's also a good follow-up card because Darkness Metal's in the deck. You could Reborn Darkness Metal on a following turn and then start zerging out big dragons uh, if your opponent somehow cracks your board. Uh, and then the last three cards in the main deck are three copies of Dark Ruler No More because I'm trying to out Dragon Link, I'm trying to out Windows, I'm trying to out all sorts of nonsense. Again, just powerful board breaking spell cards is the way this format is shaping up so far, and it's no different in this deck. But that was it for the main deck. Like I said, 43 cards. 43 cards is my historic like favorite number for like making side decking patterns work for deck lists and stuff like that. But for the extra deck, one copy of Gaydurg, one copy of Luin. One copy of Barka, one copy of Borlode Savage Dragon, one copy of Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, one copy of Dragoonite Knight Ascalon, and one copy of Dragoonite Knight Arid Bear. Uh, Luin comes up in certain combos, uh, but if you aren't playing Dark Worm, you could just play a second Barka instead of this because the second Barka will come up. But Luin comes up a bit more in interesting combos to make it hum without using Glow for Mistleton because of the fact that I'm playing Dark Worm and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Ascalon's a good board breaker. Crystal Wing and Savage Dragon are your big eights to end on. A Reaver is a very good uh, card in general. Very good, nice new addition. And Gaydurg is your main combo piece as far as synchros go. One Hyrat Dragon King of its hum. This card is insane. Boomer LP. Smiley face. And then for Lynx, uh, one copy of Romulus because he adds Glow. Uh, the Hyratic Seal of Heavenly Spheres. Hauk Fibrax for any combo where you're not locked into dragons to make your combo better by adding more tuners into the mix. One copy of LP, one copy of Pisty, and then Triple Burst Dragon and Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel for big utility links for either arrow placement for your guard dragons or for finishing out combos if your hand required that to be part of the combo to uh, to like get access to an additional card at the end of the combo. Or if you needed to clear like guard dragons up so you can use uh, like uh, Baby Rock to summon instead of having guard dragons on the board that prevent that. But for the side deck, I'm just citing um, some impactful hand traps that are really high impact for high variance matchups like 
uh, Nibiru, and Triple Droll and Lockbird. These could be Lancias, but I'm liking Droll better right now against the decks that I'm testing against and like the interactions I'm finding. Uh, Nibiru is just a card that like you can play against matchups that are high variance and like would be auto losses, like random decks like Heroes and stuff that you could just lose to because you just can't out Dark Law. Uh, but like the uh, the Nibiru just gets to be used at the end of their turn and then you just win because you have a Nibiru and their entire board is gone. Uh, stuff like that. And then I'm siding very heavily for uh, control matchups, like macro matchups, two Lightning Storm, two Evenly Match, one Red Reboot, and one Harpy's Feather Duster. So uh, you could like side the third Lightning Storm instead of Harpy's Feather Duster, but like Duster is just better in terms of like the way my siding patterns go. Uh, but why am I siding two Lightning Storm and two Evenly? Because Evenly has certain applications against matchups that might not necessarily be like control matchups where I could side those in. Um, in those like variance based matchups, uh, but against any deck like Geist or Guru, all of these go in. Literally, all six of them go in. Um, it's it's one of those things that Dragoonity has always struggled against back row decks uh, because they interact with cards uh, very favorably uh, against you because you're not really capable of stepping up into things that can deal with those cards, so you just have to like draw outs to them. But then cards that are in my side deck so I can side for matchup specific or for going first. One copy of a Morphage Greed because if I'm playing against a control deck, a trap deck or whatever, I can put this in and I can turn off that entire mechanic uh, so that I can't get got by multiple traps. And then three copies of Song of Judgment so that I can just make my board better when I'm going first. When I know I'm siding for going first against like combo decks or whatever, I can put in three Song of Judgments, take out the dead Dark Ruler No Mores, and they just make my board better so I can lose two less possible variants of things like double evenly matched or whatever. It's something that's very strong against my board because I can only negate one of them if I don't have greed up because Lechery is locking them out of scales, Goliath is locking them out of the extra deck, but I'm still vulnerable to traps and if they have double evenly or like evenly in a card to negate the Savage Dragon, like Imperm evenly or something like that, then that's something that I can't really respect. Uh, so like I have to side in cards like these. You could side in a card like Dragoody Oblite as well, like one copy of Oblite and two Judgment. Uh, I just don't find Oblite to be too terribly good for the situation because it requires you to have been playing um, whereas this doesn't, uh, but so, like, there's just some going first siding patterns of, like, when you go against combo, you put in these, uh, instead of the Dark Rulers, and when I'm playing against control decks and trap decks like Guru and Geist or whatever, I tend to side these in instead of the Dark Rulers when I'm going first, because this is good against their traps, and I can shut those off completely, and then these, if the game ever gets out of control, I can try to claw them back with, like, a turn resolving these, uh, right, so it's, like, it's, it's good for, like, those applications is what we're uh, dealing with. But that is the entire deck list, main, side, and extra. Now, I don't have any combo time for this video because this video is already long. I've already like gone over what I wanted this video to be. I wanted this video to be like a 13 minute deck profile of like going quickly as I possibly could, discussing things at a minimum, but still, you know, providing information on card choices. But I mean, apparently there's just never a way for me to shut my mouth up enough for me to, to get to any sort of time constraint. But anyway, that's going to be it for this deck profile. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you're interested in my Discord server or my Twitch page where I live stream occasionally, uh, the Discord page where you can talk to me about Dragoonies and other Yu-Gi-Oh! related stuff as well as some other people. Links to both of those are in the description down below. Use those links as you desire. Uh, but other than that, like I said, if you like this video, if this video gets 500 likes, I'll make one of those two videos I mentioned earlier of basic Dragoonie combos that you need to know or a uh, hand uh, showcase video to show you how to play out various hands that are just randomly drawn. If this video gets 1,000 likes, I'll make both of them. Guaranteed. So, that is up to you guys. If you want to see that sort of stuff or nor or like more Dragoonie content in general, just like the video. It's very simple, very easy for you to do. But other than that, as always, guys, like I've said before, subscribe if you want to see more Dragoonie content. If you want to see more content that's already on the channel, it is there for you to consume. But thank you for watching. Thanks for your time as always, and take care. I will see you in the next video.